Hi everybody, this is Stacy Black, Bossier Parish Community College. We are in Math 099 and we are now on Module 7, which is Factoring Trinomial Expressions. If you guys recall, in Chapter 12 we discussed what a trinomial is. A trinomial is an expression that has three terms. So today what we're going to do is we're going to factor them. And recall, factoring means to make this look like multiplication. So let's go up to the board and see what we can do today. If you look up here, I have four trinomial expressions. Remember, tri means three terms. What we want to do today is we want to make these look like multiplication. We want to figure out what did we multiply to make x squared plus 5x plus 6. The first thing you have to understand is in order to factor a trinomial, it must be written in the correct descending order. And again, back in chapter 12, we discussed descending order goes from the highest exponent to the lowest exponent. So we have x squared, that exponent's 2. We have x to the first, that exponent's a 1. And technically we have here an x to the 0. So this trinomial is in descending order. Now, there is a process, a pattern to follow when you factor a trinomial. The first thing is a trinomial will always factor into two binomial expressions. So the first thing we're going to do is put automatically two sets of parentheses. Again, why parentheses? Because that means to multiply. And that's what the word factoring is. It means making multiplication. So every trinomial will factor into two binomials. Now, the way you factor this is you follow a pattern. You start always with the first term. Well, if you notice, all of these trinomials all have the same first term. The first term is x squared. So you say, what do I multiply in algebra to get an x squared? And we all know that the only thing we can multiply in algebra to make an x squared is x times x. So that's what's going to go first in each set of parentheses. x times x is x squared. 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 After we multiply to figure out what makes the first term, believe it or not, now we're going to go to the last term. And yes, we're using the same words you heard in FOIL. So now we want to figure out what multiplies to 6. Don't look at the symbols yet. Just look at the number. Well, now we have some options. To multiply to 6 could either be 1 times 6, or it could be 2 times 3. You don't get to go eeny, meeny, miny, mo and pick which up set of numbers you like better. What you're going to do is learn how to read the trinomial backwards. The set of numbers you need, yes, have to multiply to 6. But they also have to add to this middle term. So this plus sign means to add. And you want to add to the middle term. Now why is that? Well, if you remember from chapter 12, we learned how to multiply binomials. And when you multiply two terms, type two terms, you do the FOIL method. And FOIL stood for first, outer, inner, last. Well, there's the first term because it's first. There's the last term, because it's last. So this middle term is your outers and your inners put together. And remember, when we did FOIL, the outers and the inners would either add or subtract to make this term. So that's what we're doing. We're reading this backwards. So, helpful hit. You want to multiply to the last number. Write your options. Now read it to yourself. I want to add to 5. Will 1 and 6 add to 5? No. 1 and 6 add to 7. Will 2 and 3 add to 5? Yes. Now all you got to do is get the signs. We've already discussed this this semester. Add means the terms 
have to be alike, the same. So if you want to add to a positive 5, because that's what that is, it's positive. They both have to be the same sign. They both have to be positive. If you look, this is connected by multiplication. You have factored a trinomial. Let's try the next one. Again, first term is easy. What multiplies to x squared? x times x. What multiplies to 6? 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Read it backwards. I want to add. So, if you want to add, what do you want to add to that number there? 5. Don't look at the symbols yet. I want to add to 5. Will 1 and 6 add to 5? No. Will 2 and 3 add to 5? Yes. Now, does it matter what order you put the 2 and 3 in? Absolutely not. Remember, this is connected by multiplication. So, if you write 2 times 3 and I write 3 times 2, we're both going to get 6. What matters now is the symbols. Add means the signs have to be the same. You can only add things that are alike. To add to a negative 5, they both have to be negative. That's the pattern you're learning. So to factor trinomial, always two binomials. How do you decide what the symbols are? If it says add, they have to be alike. Well, how do you decide what they're going to be? You look at the middle term. Now if you look, same trinomial, change the symbols around again. So again, we start the pattern. Start with the first. What multiplies to x squared? x times x. What multiplies to 6? 1 and 6, 2 and 3. But now it doesn't say add. It has a minus. That means to subtract. So you want your numbers to multiply to 6 and to subtract to what's in the middle, 5. Can 2 and 3 subtract to 5? No, not at all. Can 1 and 6 subtract to 5? Yes. Now, because you said subtract, you already know this. When you subtract, numbers are different signs. Think about first grade. 3 minus 2. 3 is positive. 2 is negative. You subtract. So the rule is if you're subtracting, the symbols, the signs have to be different. How do you decide who gets a positive, who gets a negative? You look at the middle. The sign in the middle goes to who's larger. 6 is larger. 6 gets a positive. The 1 gets the negative. I'm going to check it. Do you all agree? Negative 1 times 6 would be a negative 6. Do you agree? A negative 1 plus 6, you really would subtract and get the positive 5. Let's try the last one. I'm factoring a trinomial. The pattern is begin with the first. What multiplies to x squared? x times x. Then you go to the last. What multiplies to 6? 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Again, you read, I want to subtract to make the 5. So, can 1 and 6 subtract to make 5? Yes. That's your combination. You don't even got to check that one. Does it matter where you put the 1 and 6? No. What matters is the sign. Subtract means the signs must be different. You can only subtract things that are different, a positive and negative. I want a negative 5. So that means this sign's got to go to the larger number. 6 is larger than 1. Let me check it. Negative 6 times positive 1 would be negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 would really subtract and get negative 5. So to factor a trinomial, First of all, you must be in what order? Descending. x squared, then x, and then your constant. You will always factor trinomial into two sets of parentheses. Always. You will start with the first, then you will move to the last, and then you will read to see whether you want to add or subtract to make the middle term. If you say add, 
the symbols are always going to be alike. If you say subtract, the symbols are going to be one of each, and the sign in the middle will go to the large. Let's try just one or two more to make sure we got it. So let's look at our class notes, and let's look at example number nine. X squared plus 4X plus 4. This is example 9 in the class notes. I want to factor. It is a trinomial. So I put two parentheses. I start with the first term. What multiplies to X squared? X times X. Then I go to the last term. What can multiply to 4? 1 and 4, 2 and 2. The only way to decide which one works is to read. You want to add to 4. Can 1 and 4 add to 4? No. Can 2 and 2 add to 4? Yes. You said add, so the signs have to be the same. If that sign's a positive, that means these both have got to be positive. Now, this is one way to write the answer. X plus 2 times X plus 2. But what we've already seen in chapter 12, when you multiply the same thing, that means to square. And another way to write this answer is to say I have X plus 2 squared, which means I have it multiplied twice. Okay, let's try another example. Let's try the example in your notes. Example 14. X cubed minus 10X squared plus 24X. This is example 14 in the class notes. Again, I'm looking. There's three terms here. This is a trinomial. But wait a minute. This looks different than the ones we've been doing. And that's because it doesn't start out with an x squared. It starts out with an x cubed. So you have to understand this. When we're factoring, we can't forget the rules we learned previously. We talked about in another module, the first rule of factoring was always GCF, greatest common factor. You are always to look and see, do these terms have something in common? We can divide out of them first. If they do, you must do that first. So if you look very closely, they all have the letter X. That is your GCF. So we're going to take out an X and tell me what's left. Factoring has to be a step-by-step -step process. You can only do one rule at a time. We learned in a previous module, when you do the GCF rule, this is what they have in common. It goes in front. And in here is going to be what's left over when we divide by X. So we're going to divide all these terms by x. We're going to get x squared minus 10x plus 24. Now the problem is you're not done factoring. Factoring is not just a one rule kind of problem. If you look, here's our now new trinomial rule. I still have three terms, but now they're in the order we've seen them today. We have an x squared, an x, and a constant. So we just learned every trinomial factors into two parentheses. I call these easy trinomials because they all start out the same way. They all start out with x squared. And x squared is x times x. Then you'll go to the last number. It's 24. So we have lots of options here. First, we're going to list all our options that multiply to 24. That's 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. You cannot go eeny, meeny, miny, mo and pick which option you like. You have to read the trinomial. I want to multiply to 24 and add to this 10. So let's check. Will 1 and 24 add to 10? No. Will 2 and 12 add to 10? No, it will subtract, and I don't want to subtract, I want to add. 
Will three and eight add to 10? No. Will four and six add to 10? Yes. Now, to get the signs, I read. Adding means we have to be alike. I want to add to a negative 10, so they're both going to be negative. Now, that's not the final answer because you've got to remember when you do the GCF rule, this term that you pulled out that they have in common has to stay as part of the answer. So that X has got to come down. This is factor. That's all connected by multiplication. Let's do one more in the notes because I want to prove a point. If you would all look now in your class notes at example number 11. It is x squared plus 9x minus 12. Example 11 in the class notes. Again, we're going to go through factoring. The first step is to find out do they have something in common, a GCF. They do not. So then I look and say, oh, it's a trinomial. It's in the correct order. So I automatically put two parentheses. I start with always the first term. If this is easy because there's only one thing in math that can multiply to x squared, x times x. After we work the first term, we go to the last. That's a 12. So you sit and list every combination that multiplies to 12. And there are three options. Those are the only combinations of numbers you can use because those are the only three options that multiply to 12. So like we said the other day, yes, you have to know your multiplication facts to be good at factoring. Now I have to read. I want to multiply to 12, and it says I want to subtract to make the 9. 1 and 12 subtracts to 11, out. 2 and 6 subtracts to 4, out. 3 and 4 will subtract to make 1, out. Well, you have no more options. So what you have to learn is this. Not every expression in algebra can be broken into multiplication. Not every expression can factor. You can't force two numbers to multiply to 12 and subtract to 9. If it can't happen, it can't happen. So we said the other day, if you cannot factor, you call this expression prime, which means it's in its lowest terms, it cannot factor anymore. Hope you enjoyed this module. See you next time.